and live the American dream. Or one where she will struggle through an educational system that she is not re readily prepared for. Wonder whether she will graduate from high school or get a job that pays living wage at all. Why I am qualified to tell this story is because I'm a Head Start teacher. I know that the work I do every day benefits my kids and their families every single day. I've been a Head Start teacher for seven years in Cedar Rapids, as Jim said. 
Funding for our kids has already been gutted last year. Congress is doing it to us again this year for the 2012 budget year. These cuts have resulted in classrooms being shut down intermittently between Thanksgiving of 2010 and August of this year, which means that teachers aren't working, kids aren't getting educational opportunities, and here's the other kicker. Our families, their parents of the children that we have in our classrooms are not able to work on those days because they have no other affordable child care resources. No, it's not. And it, it, it's a cycle. None of this is good news for the children and the parents. It's hurting our economy and the story gets even worse. So you're probably thinking that it's too bad. But we need to make cuts someplace, right? No. Tell that to Kim, Bridget, Peggy, Joe, and Michelle. Some of my Head Start co-workers that were laid off recently for a couple of months. And they didn't know if they were going to be coming back to work or not. And then they didn't know if they'd be coming back to the same job that paid the same wage or at a lower classification with less hours or worse benefits. Closing Head Start classrooms means that parents have no preschool or child care for their children. Bobby, a single mom whose, work, whose son was in a Head Start classroom, that meant she lost her job in December when we were closed for so many days that she couldn't go to work. Because again, she couldn't afford childcare when she's working at a part-time job that pays, you know, seven with seven dollars an hour. She can't afford to pay someone two hundred dollars a week to watch her child when she's only making three hundred dollars a week, and she still has to pay for food, rent, clothing, and all the things that her children need. Fellow Iowans, these cuts are not only destroying Iowa jobs, they've resulted in 45 children being denied access to educational opportunities, which provide the Head Start program every year, every day. So that's why I'm here today speaking on behalf of the Kims, the Bridgets, the Joes, the Michelles, and all the other 100,000 Iowans that are currently have no job. Congress, we need jobs and we need them now. No more cuts. And are you on our side, or are you on the side of the CEOs and the wealthy corporations? My co-workers who are laid off can't find a job that pays a decent wage and has, one and has the benefits they need to protect their families and their lives. I say it's time to stop the cuts and get islands and Americans back to work. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you. What I want to talk about is what's happening in Congress. We have had difficulty getting our friends the ability to do the things that they know that real people back in Iowa need to be done. The last uh, part of Congress, right before they went into recess in August, the, what passed was a debt deal. It Iowans, take a look all around. We say Iowans, there's no jobs to be found. We are fed up with political clowns. We are here to straight up Congress, you must act like a team because so far we don't like what we see. We are killing the American dream. Go to work and start to help us. That's why we gotta have J-O-B-S. That's why we gotta have J-O-B-S. You ignore what we need. Don't support it's time to get back to work. That's why we gotta have J O B S. That's why we gotta have J O B S. You can help create jobs. You can strengthen us here. The answer is crystal clear. Really. Hi, my name is Steve Cotter. I'm a proud veteran of the United States, my Iraq Freedom veteran. I'm also a proud member of AFSCME, Iowa Delta 61, Local 35. And unfortunately, uh, I have just recently found I'm going to be unemployed after 32 years with the state of Iowa. Uh, 
when I, when I transferred to this job a year ago, there were two people doing this job, and now there was one doing it in the last year. Now there's going to be none. I work in the Department of Cultural Affairs for the state of Iowa, building and maintaining the exhibits in the state historical building. Now there's going to be nobody there to take care of that stuff so that the kids and the schools and everybody else can come up there and visit and have a nice place to, to be. You know, that's, and it's not about jobs. It's not about, you know, it's about anti-worker, it's about anti-government, you know, they don't, they don't care that your kids are not going to be able to come to the State Historical Building anymore and, and look at something that, that is going to be maintained well. It ain't going to happen. There's nobody there to do that anymore after <laughs> September. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's tragic. You know, it's, it's not downsizing government. Obviously, they did a smart thing when they only hired one person to do two. You know, it's just, it's very tragic, you know. And we need to get people off their butts and they need to start creating jobs. And, you know, people need to realize that, you know, they need people there to do things and to create jobs. You know, they need, people in Washington need to move forward and start giving some money back, you know, get, get, create some money and create jobs with, you know, to me, the only way to create jobs, there's no way to create jobs by eliminating jobs in state government or in federal government or wherever it's at. You know, they need to create jobs, they need to get them out there, you know, and get more people working and get things moving, you know. Uh, that's... That's all I got to say, you know, they need to, you know, I don't, oh, I also forgot, I got two sons in college, too. So I got 32 years down the road, Iraqi veteran, two kids in college, and we're done, you know. So, that's not right. You know, they need to, people need to, you know, people need to realize that what's going on with, in the United States and in, in this state here, right here. So, that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you.